one of the TV shows that I'll tell you straight up was my most anticipated show for a couple of years was Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Ever since they announced that show and that Amazon was going to be financing it and the money that they were putting into it for at least two years leading up to that show, I said easily my most anticipated show is Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. And I think it's going to be the best show that comes out. Uh, you know, of course, we had House of the Dragon coming out. And I believed in House of the Dragon, but I said, yeah, yeah, yeah the Rings of Power is going to be better than House of the Dragon and all that kind of stuff. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, House of the Dragon was clearly the better show. I mean, it's all subjective. If you believe Rings of Power is the better show, you and I have no beef. Uh, that's great. I personally thought <laughs> the House of the Dragon was clearly the better show. Uh, I still liked Rings of Power. I did. But I did not like it to the degree of two years of super high hype and excitement that I had for that show. It had some real good strong points, had some real low, low points. Now, on one hand, we know that the show was very successful for Amazon because they gave out the numbers that, remember, when it comes to streaming services, the most important statistic that streaming services had is first click. What first click is, is what is the first thing a person watches when they sign up to your streaming service? That tells, that is the most valuable piece of information that all the streaming services have. Okay, we had 100 people sign up and 73 of them, like 100 people signed up yesterday and 73 of them, the very first thing they went to watch was Stranger Things. Okay, that tells you that Stranger Things got them to come and sign up for your service if you're Netflix. Which is why Peacock sent me an email that said, look at all of our true crime documentaries. <laughs> See? Come on in. The water's fine. They all do it. And it's their number one piece of data that they get. Amazon released data that showed that their first click stuff, they got a lot of subscribers because of Lord of Rings, Rings of Power. And on that level, the show was very successful for them. However, there's another analytic that just came out that does not paint as rosy of a picture. And that is completion rate. According to stories, the completion rate, and that is the number of people who started watching the show and actually finished the show, actually watched it through to the conclusion of the season finale, was only about one in three. A little bit higher, 37%. One in three, roughly. To put that in context, I believe the Stranger Things completion rate was hovering around 60%. Uh, I know that, um, what's the, my, uh, the Arcane, my favorite animated show of all time. It had like a 62, 63% completion rate, whatever. And that's not even, that's not considered great either. 37% is terrible. Now, that doesn't take away the success that Amazon had with First Click. Like a lot of people signed up for Amazon Prime internationally and around the world strictly because they wanted to watch Rings of Power. Again, on that level, big success. But here's where it becomes a problem for you. That's great for season one. What happens with season two when nearly two-thirds of the people who decided, yeah, I want to give this Lord of the Rings show a shot. I want to watch this Rings of Power. When nearly two out of every three who did that, at some point before the finale said, I'm out. I'm out. Nearly two out of every three said, I'm done. I'm tapping out. I, I, I can't take it anymore. Th th this is enough. That haircut is abysmal. I cannot watch it. Freaking Tolkien Eminem wannabe sitting out there in the wilderness. No, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Two out of every three people who sat down to watch this show tapped out of it. That is a horrible statistic. Uh, considering most everyone has Prime too. So it's like right there. Like it's not like, oh yeah, I had to cancel the service. I mean, a lot of people well, I mean, you have... signed up for it. Even uh, the people who signed up for it. I mean, you signed up, you got it. So finish it out. And now listen, again, there are things about the show that I really, really, really loved. Like the relationship between Elrond and Durin, I, I could have watched, seriously, you could have made the whole show just about the two of them. 
You could have changed Rings of Power to, you know, the the, the winds of Middle Earth, the Elrond and Durin story. I mean, and I would have been all about it. I mean, that was clearly the singular best thing about this show. I loved those characters together. And then they had some, they had some weaknesses. Some weaknesses that hit other people bigger than it hit me. Again, I still enjoy the show. I still liked it, but it was not as good as I wanted it to be. And for a lot of people, it was bad enough that two out of every three said I'm out. And that brings up a problem for Amazon because fantastic. You had a great first click rate with season one. You ain't going to get that for season two now. Season two is going to be a very, very different story. Because when two out of every three couldn't even finish the first season, what's going to happen with the second? And you've already spent the money. They are in on this franchise for billions. They are in this franchise for billions. Ray. I mean, I, I think a problem not only with Lord of the Rings, this Rings of Power, is with any big IP address from the past, is you'll always get the people who love it to watch. It's the newer kids or whatever to bring them in. It's it's a hard uh, formula to figure out right now. Just because, you know, like there's kids that are it, probably skip this show. I mean, the or any other IP that we love, like at, at, at our age, you know what I mean? Like I, listen, House of the Dragon didn't seem to have any problem bringing in the audience. House the, of the audience. Dragon is uh, it's I, it's different. another HBO level. It's a little different, you know. HBO pulls you in from the start for any show. I mean, yeah, they just had it on another level. And, and I just think of these older, like Lord of the Rings, even the Marvel stuff, like Fantastic. All of them have to figure out a way to, because you could always kind of bank on the people who love this stuff already to watch. Sure, but it's here's just the problem. newer stuff that they want to get in, and they're having a hard time getting those people in. But here's the problem. Here's, this is the problem. This is where they're really screwed. It doesn't matter if you find a way to get them in if two out of every three of them are going to tap out before the show even gets to its conclusion. <laughs> right? I mean, you can get you can get all the first-time viewers to come in you want. If your show's bad enough that two out of every three are going to tap out, it doesn't matter how many first-time viewers you bring in. I mean, it worked for season one, it counts. And for season one, they figured it out. A lot of people came in and watched the show. Great. But <laughs> almost 63% of them ditched before it finished. And, and do you remember our first reaction to the first episode? That wasn't really a... Uh... Hey, I'm going to come next week and watch this. Dude, I nearly tapped out because remember, I went to go see the first two episodes in theaters, right? They dropped the first two episodes in special theater screenings about a week before the show came out. And I remember saying when I came out of it, if it was only one episode, like if I if I didn't watch two episodes back to back, because I thought the second episode was much better than the first. But if it was, they had only showed us one episode, I would have tapped out of it after one episode because the first episode was not good. It was not good. I thought the second episode improved, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay on it. But yeah, I mean, they didn't come out of the gate strong. They did not finish strong. Yeah, they got it. They got and it. they, I'll tell you what, they got real problems now, man. <laughs> yes, they do. Because they've got the money in this already. They got mm. season two, and two-thirds of the audience don't want to come back and watch it again. Now, I'm willing to bet that there is going to be a portion of the audience that ditched on season one to go, I'll give season two a shot because I've done that before. I've done that where I didn't like a certain season or something. I go, you know what though? I'll give it another shot to see if it improved in between seasons. So you get some of those, you'll get some of those, but they are royally jacked. They're, they're only going to come back. I read a bulk of them. If word of mouth gets out, I agree. 100%. Season two is dope or whatever right. like that. And you know I'll what? The same like, thing okay. happened with, um, with Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, right? Because there were a lot of people who did not like the way Game of Thrones ended. I did, but there were a lot of people who didn't. And a lot of people swore online, I'm not going to watch that new Game of Thrones show. They screwed up the ending of the bed. I'm not going to watch that. Well, guess what? A lot of them did, but even the ones that didn't, when word came out, like to your point, Ray, when word started getting out that, hey guys, this House of the Dragon show fucking rules. Then people were like, uh, they start here in their head dun, 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 and they're like, all right, all right, all right. And then they go and check it out and they saw that as fa fabulous, right? Yeah. It, you're right. It's going to take something like that, I think, to bring a lot of those people who tapped out back into season two. But can they do it? I don't know. What's funny is that House of the Dragon is so good to me that 
if they blatantly put a Starbucks cup in this next season, <laughs> like right in front, like on top of a dragon's <laughs> head, I wouldn't care. Like, like uh, the Lord of the Rings really is on eggshells right now. With hey, a lot. absolutely, it so, is. So uh, they gotta hopefully shape things up. Hopefully, more people will uh, tune in and finish it. Here's here's how good House of the Dragon is compared to Lord of the Rings. All right. Often, I have to twist Ray's arm to come over for watching certain episodes of shows that we're going to cover. Like, Ray, just come on. We got to watch it. It's good if we watch it. And I got, oh, I got so much to do. I'm so tired. No, 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 just come over, come over, come over. And, you know, but for House of the Dragon, that didn't happen. Yeah, we're getting when, barbecues. I'm there. Yeah, party. Ray is like, I'm going to go get, he, Ray's calling me. I'm going to go pick up barbecue. What do you want? And like, <laughs> like, like, that's how good House of the Dragon it just is. It hit me a little different than Lord of the Rings. That's the problem with that too. I often I ask myself with this Rings of Power, would I, if we didn't weren't doing an after show, would we have would, still I, would it? I have kept watching it? Yeah, and I'm not sure. Rings of to China. be honest, I don't know. There's a couple episodes where I was like, I, I might just wait for the whole thing to finish up and just binge the whole thing. So there's probably a lot of people who did that. Yeah, and just didn't go back. Yep, 100. percent Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think? This is a staggering number. Almost two thirds of everybody who started watching Rings of Power. Did not get all the way through it. Uh, that could be a real problem for Amazon moving forward. Maybe you don't think it's that big of an issue and, and everybody's just going to come right back to it. I don't know. Whatever you guys think, whether you loved the series, hated the series, or kind of indifferent to it, whatever your thoughts about this are, jump down to the comments section below and leave those thoughts there. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia